Right, okay, uh, so I want to talk to you about uh, my axe blocks today, because uh, I think um, it's something that's not been covered very well on blogs, or not that I've seen anyway. Uh, so this is, uh, this is my axe block that I've been using since September. Um, all it is is three cleft uh, ash legs. Um, I've put tenons on them with a Veritas inch and a half cutter, and I've put them in an inch and a half hole. It's blind, they've been knocked in, they ain't ever going to come out. Um, this big block is a block of sycamore. It's worked brilliantly for me. Uh, it's a fork, I don't think it really needs to be a fork, but that doesn't mean it's not going to split. I've got the grain running horizontally, uh, which means that I can dress the surface to how I want it. Um, and it's a nice large bulk, uh, so it's got good uh, good inertia against any force that, that I'm putting into it, so it can resist uh, the effort of the axe. Um, so, so, you can see uh, how the top of my axe block or chopping block has worn down, uh, and I actually use, use this surface to my advantage, so I can hold the bit of wood lent into that, and I can look down at the, uh, and then it's very stable, very well supported against the uh, force of the axe. I also have other other notches in it for, for other things I do, so uh, this, this notch down here has been cut, cut in um, and uh, I actually use this for, for, for adding, um, but it, uh, it opposes any force coming down this way. Um, so if I was if I was adzing down towards that way, it's quite useful. I like the height of this, particularly for for this cut where I'm aiming at the edge of the block. Um, it means I don't have to bend over too far. So this is my uh, preferred style of axe block, and it has done me done me brilliantly over the last few months. Um, one thing I would say that uh, in in the book Swedish Carving Techniques, uh, Willie suggests to cover your axe block with a bit of plywood or whatever whilst it's not in use because bits of dust or if it's outside bird shit or whatever, uh, bits of grit are going to blunt your axe and I, I do think that's worth doing. Right, uh, I'll show you the next axe block. Right, so this is the type of uh, axe block that I use on my courses. Uh, it's uh, very easy for people to get hold of. It's a simple log, you don't need to put any legs uh, like the other axe block that I just showed you. Um, and you can, uh, the bigger it is, the, the better it will be really. Um, but then it's inconvenient for carrying around. This is one that uh, didn't really make it uh, for my courses uh, and I now use it just for sawing soaring on. Um, however, if I was to use this as an axe block, uh, you could have it sat with your legs apart and you can rest your arm for extra control on your knee and look down the block. You can see there's a bit of wobble to this log. Um, the bigger it is, the less wobble it's going to have. You can make it have effectively uh, a tripod by attaching three very small legs to it. Uh, the, the simplest way of doing that actually would just be to put a couple of little axe chips underneath it and then it would rest on the log and then two axe chips which will be the same as, as three legs. Um, so you can use it like this where you're supporting your forearm for extra control which I think is very useful actually. Um, and you can also use it, use it to your side uh, and then you've got the option of supporting the wood uh, on on your leg, um, which is similar to my axe block that has uh, the groove cut into it for, for supporting it. Uh, so that's 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 the way that I would advise most people if uh, they were just starting out and they wanted to make an axe block. This is what I teach people to use on my courses, and what I'd, I'd advise them to get for at home. So, obviously when I'm tramping around, I can't have the giant axe block that I've got behind me or this little log here with me, because that'd just be a right effort. Uh, sometimes when I'm in woods, you find uh, dead tree stumps that you might feel are okay for using as axe blocks. But generally speaking, in the woods, I'll find some kind of fork 
uh, dead fork and use that lying on the floor or in cities I just grab a bit of two by four or even a bit of plywood from a skip and that works fine on the floor. What you want to make sure of is that you're cutting, you're chopping down across the grain into the block. Uh, if you chop down into the grain, the chances are, especially with softwood like this, if it's a small bit, you're just going to split it and go straight into concrete. Um, but this works absolutely fine. Um, it's probably the reason why I've got, tend to have rips in my jeans, because I spend a lot of time knelt on the floor. Uh, but this is a very reasonable axe block. It's just not as comfortable as being stood uh, nice and upright or sat down in a chair. And uh, it also gives you kind of slightly less options for, for when you're doing slightly more complex cuts. So if I was cutting in to create a crank, then I might re less rest my hand down on the concrete here and then come in like that. There we go, bit of information about Axebox. Uh, if you've got your two penneth to chip in, then whack that in the comments. Guess the tune. Okay, that's enough, ow. <laughs> uh, a hint is it's a theme tune. Oh, I, I stopped uh, recording sound, though. Whatever.